and helping them with their challenges. And, you know, there's that thing of wanting to help people and wanting to um, be of service to people, which is brilliant. But then when you are spreading yourself thin, you need to remember that you're in this because you're, you're here to make money for whatever reason, because of the lifestyle that you want to live, because you just need to live firstly, because, you know, you might have a family to take care of, to support that kind of thing. And it took, um, it took someone saying to me, look, um, it's great for you to kind of offer this free service because it, it became a service, the amount that I was doing it. But you know, that's taking time away from your client work and it's taking time away from even your son. You could be spending that time with your son. So actually it does, you do need to be compensated. And I felt a little guilty putting a price tag on it at the beginning. Um, but I did, I set it up as a service and now I have a service called Borrow My Brain where freelance copywriters can get in touch and book a 30 minute or 60 minute call. And I mean, I'll show them the inside of my business. I'll show them the strategies that I use. I'll show them that my templates, I will, you know, guide them through whatever challenges they're having. Um, but putting that price tag on was, was initially difficult for me. But when I saw people were actually paying for it and actually valued my advice enough to pay for it, I thought, well, now I feel better about it. Now I feel better about it because, you know, people are willing to pay and they can see the value and people are paying. So again, uh, will it make you happy? Will it make you money? Yeah. And I think there is a little bit of that guilt and admittedly I'm the sales side of thing is not my strong point. I will admit that I love, I really enjoy the marketing stuff and my background's actually in marketing and comms. So I do really enjoy that. Um, I obviously like the visual elements of it, but when it comes to the sales stuff, I really struggle with that because you're right. People value your experience and you're able to solve a problem for them. You're able to give them what they need, but it's kind of changing that mindset to I'm helping people instead of I'm asking people for money, I think is the way it's, um, but it's a work in progress. I know for myself and quite a few other small biz owners that I know are the same. They're just, it's hard to wrap your head around that money side of things. Exactly. It's a really difficult shift. And it took me a long time to kind of um, get to the point where I could talk about money freely. And now, as you've probably seen on my social media, I talk about money quite a lot because I think it's really important. And, and just being more open and talking about money as opposed to running away from those money conversations um, has just has even changed the type of people that approach me to work with me. So I no longer kind of have to have um, conversations with people who don't have the budget to work with me. I used to spend so long kind of talking to those people and then you realize too late when you were already really deep in the process that actually they don't have the budget to work with you. Now, because people have heard me talk about money and I'm really comfortable talking about money, um, even just the caliber of clients that approach me um, are clients that you know have the budget to work with me. And I think that's really important too. Even just being on sales calls and asking people, what is your budget? Or having a form that they have to fill in before we even get on the phone asking, what is your budget? Like, I, it was so difficult for me to do that initially. And I came from a place where, I mean, I used to find it difficult to send an invoice right at the beginning of my business because I felt like I was asking people for money as opposed to, you know, asking people to pay me for the service that I'd, I'd given them. It's been a real journey and it took me actually, again, um, hiring a coach and going kind of through all my money mindset issues. But I think that is something really important to, to overcome so that you can be the best business owner you can be. And also so that you don't um, lowball yourself. Um, I was watching something on Netflix recently and this, the, one of the characters said something that really stuck with me and he told his wife, no one's coming and she was like what and he was like no one's coming no one is coming to save you no one is coming to help you it's all you you are the only person that's coming so you have to stand your ground and stand up for yourself as a business owner no, I, that's such a good point. And that is, we're doing this solo. So maybe some people have a business partner or they might have some staff, but you know, for most of us, we are solo entrepreneurs and we have to figure it out ourselves. And you're right. If you're kind of always waiting for somebody to save you or someone else to drop in with a solution, you have to work these things out yourself. Absolutely. And I, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of um, paying for help. 
I really don't see the point in us as business owners really struggling to to work through stuff by ourselves for years and years when we can pay people to help us. So, you know, if there's ever a point where you do need help, I'm a really big advocate of, of paying for it, whether that's paying for coaching or mentoring or joining a community of like-minded business owners or joining a mastermind. I have seen so much benefit from paying for support and help over the past couple of years. Um, and I know for a fact my business wouldn't be where it is had I not. So, you know, no one's come in and no one's going to save you. Um, but there are people and places where you can find support. So I definitely, you know, advise people to do that too. I think that's, it's interesting you say that because that's something that comes up so often when I interview people for this podcast is that when you're starting out for a lot of people, they have this kind of idea in their head that they have to DIY everything. And part of that might just be I think for a lot of people, it's hard to let go of any control. You know, you kind of think, oh, I need to do it all myself. Sometimes it's a budget issue when you're starting out, you're maybe not making, bringing in that much income yet. And it's a worry, but I think it's interesting. I've never worked with a business coach before or a mentor, but I can really see the value in it. And it's something that I'm really considering now because I'm finding it very tough to be objective with my own business. And um, it's really hard to not kind of, not take it personally, but it's just, it's so close to your heart. It's like your baby, you've built it. And I think it's quite scary to relinquish a bit of control or to make decisions that are a little bit more cutthroat. And I think having somebody who can coach you through and kind of guide you onto the right track must be so valuable. It is, it is, oh gosh, it's so valuable. Um, I mean, it's valuable mentally, um, emotionally, financially. Um, I've seen such a huge return um, on the investments that I've made through coaching and mentoring and that kind of thing. Um, but I think the main thing is just knowing that you have someone who has your back, someone who can really give you tailored advice. So it's not just like, you know, a blog post or a general video that you're watching. It's someone who understands your business, understands you, understands your wants, your dreams, your ambitions, your desires, your fears, your worries, your concerns, and they can give you tailored advice that will help you grow your business in the way that you want it to grow. And I mean, one of the first things I did was join a, um, a copywriting community and I'm still part of that community now, nearly two years later. And I mean, within a few months of joining that community, my coach helped me um, quadruple my rates within, within months. And um, yeah, and I had one of my best financial months not long after that. And now, funnily enough, my coach is my client. I've just finished working with her, so it feels like a you know a full circle. I've worked with, I've written for some of the, you know, biggest um, copywriting names in the copywriting industry, and I that would not have happened had I not invested in myself and joined these communities and memberships. And you know, it's not just about learning as well. And there is so much learning to do. It's not just about learning; it's also about building connections because there is only so much that free support and advice can get you and once you start investing in yourself and paying for support and you start paying to build your network and connections I mean the the benefit is I mean I could do a whole podcast episode on just that I would highly recommend it and I know it's so scary for people to invest in themselves I know it's so scary especially when you're a small business owner and you don't know how much money you're going to get each month you really don't know a lot of the time right so it is scary um, but you know, a lot of people think that you have to see growth first before you invest. And actually it's the other way around. You have to invest in order to see growth. So it's all about taking that first step. And I think, um, maybe joining a community or a membership or getting a coach that isn't so expensive to start off with is a really good place to start because just paying 20 pound a month, 30 pound a month for the kind of support that you need will convince you of the benefits of having that support and then you will then feel more confident to kind of invest in bigger numbers for more support. No, that makes a lot of sense. And that's maybe a good stepping stone for people that are a little bit worried about making that investment or are kind of on the fence about it. Maybe that's a good place to start. And when you start seeing results from that, then you can always grow from there. But on this topic, um, and I'm putting you on the spot a little bit here, but do you have any sort of tips or advice on how to find the right, whether it's a business coach or a mentor or someone to help with another area of your business, how did you go about finding someone who is the right fit for you? 
Oh, that's such a good question. And funnily enough, I was actually getting ready to do a Facebook and Instagram live about this very topic because so many people have asked me this question and uh, oh gosh, there's so much. I mean, the first thing is, well, I'll tell you how I found my coaches that might be helpful. So um, I started listening to a podcast called Hot Copy Podcast and this podcast was for copywriters and it basically taught you how to build your business, how to become a better copywriter. And so I was listening to that podcast and then um, found out that both the hosts actually have their own copywriting communities where they coach copywriters to build their businesses confidently. So I ended up joining one of them and that was the community I was talking about just before and I'm still in that community now. So I think firstly, it's about accessing um, free resources, go out and find podcasts and blogs and you know follow those people on Instagram and Facebook and wherever else, LinkedIn or wherever it is that they are, Twitter. And make those connections and I think once you find someone you like who is teaching you stuff that you feel is valuable and that is you know their free advice actually helps you build your business and you've not even paid a thing yet um have a look at what else they've got to offer because often they do have something else to offer and they are getting you know um requested they are being asked for a lot of advice so they usually have services where they you know, teaching people and people can learn from them. And I think the other thing then is to see who they're following. So who do they talk about and who do they mention and who do they interview? And then start building like like web of links so that you can find out where the people you look up to are getting their knowledge from. Who did they learn from? Ask them, get in touch with them. And I think that is when you'll kind of start seeing um I guess the patterns and certainly in the copywriting industry, there are um, a few really big names and it's almost like that they're pockets. <laughs> so they have pockets of community. So you know that someone's either learned from so-and-so or, yeah, or they've learned from so-and-so and just finding out those, um, I guess those, those links and those networks is, is what is really helpful. Um, for me, it was always, I, I mean, I'm really ambitious and I'm really competitive. So for me, it was always, I want to be one of the best copywriters in the industry. Like I'm not here to, I'm not here to play. I'm not here to <laughs> be second best. I want to be one of the best copywriters in this industry. I want to learn from the best. So I was literally like, right, who is the best? Okay. Them. Okay. Who did they learn from? So I don't just want to learn from the best. I want to learn from the best teacher and find out where they, who they are. So now actually I am learning under, um, two of the best, um, actually a few of the best, uh, uh, copywriters in the industry, some of the best well-known people. And that was all because I wanted to kind of like, it's almost like a family tree. <laughs> I just wanted to kind of follow it all the way back up to the top. And, um, and yeah, and that, that's where that's where I am now. That's how I found my coaches and mentors. And I have quite a few. I have a few different coaches for a few different things because I think people are different, are you know, best for different things. So I have one for kind of like, I guess, emotional and mental support and general day-to-day -day advice. And I have another for like, you know, big picture, um, big picture business plans and um, copywriting skills and that kind of thing. So, you know, you don't also have to just have one, I think. But I think the most important thing in choosing a mentor or a coach is to find someone you like. You have to like them and you also have to look at their business and think, I want to grow a business like that. And if you don't want to grow a business like theirs, then stay far away from them and find someone um, whose business you admire and look up to. That's a really good point because I've I've been thinking about this a lot during lockdown and I think we kind of saw a bit of a shift. Um, how do I put this? Or maybe it's more that people's kind of true colors really came out. But I found that a lot of the businesses that I was following, as you say, that I was kind of looking up to, or maybe not even necessarily other photographers, but other small business owners who had built quite successful brands. And I kind of saw people go one way or the other. There was a sort of shift in people helping and trying to kind of share their knowledge a little bit more. And you could see the shift in their head that it went a little bit more to the educational side of things based on their social media anyways. And then I saw a shift on the other side um, where it was very much, it was very much about like, us against them and a sort of mentality of like, if you're not just going full force for it, then you're doing it wrong. And you started to see that kind of 
dynamic and not that one is right and one is wrong. Different things work for different people, but it really made me realize, as you just said there, the type of businesses that I want to follow and the type of sort of social media posts I want to do and what I want my business to be for other people. And you know, on the other side of that, the way I don't want it to be. And it really kind of changed even the type of businesses that I look up to and that I follow looking at where their priorities lie. So that's been quite interesting for me over the 